Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Bird flu equals disease X. Oh yeah, look out people. Pig man dies. Ooh, no. And trans fam. <laughs> Welcome. You're here with the big Sig Tig. What's going on today? Boom. Dozens of Colorado dairy farms workers monitored for bird flu symptoms. Well, yeah, we were talking about this last week and none of the dairy farmers wanted the government agents on their land. So they were like, get out of here. Don't be testing us. Well, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment confirmed Friday that approximately 70 dairy farm workers are currently being monitored for possible symptoms of avian flu. Well, there's only been two confirmed cases, people, by the CDC, and they're trying to verify, like, if this thing is spreading and the farmers are like, get off of my property. I don't want to be tested. I just have the flu. Well, 70 workers recently exposed to the virus while employed at two Colorado dairy farms. Neither of the farms or workers have been identified. None of the workers are reporting symptoms of infection at this time. Uh, the agency will coordinate testing for any of the workers who do report symptoms and ensure flu antiviral drugs are available to them. Department of Agricultural first detected bird flu in Colorado dairy herd on April 25th. Second Colorado herd tested positive Wednesday. The virus was first discovered in a Texas dairy herd in late March. One person from the Texas farm became mildly symptomatic. They had bleeding eyes. Uh, that is, to this point, the only person to become ill due to the virus's transmission to dairy herds. That person is the first to contract this particular strain of the virus from another mammal, per the WHO. The first person to contract it directly from birds was an inmate working at a commercial poultry factory near Montrose two years ago. Nothing came of that. Highly pathogenic avian influenza HPAI, H5N1, highly contagious and often deadly in birds and can be easily transmitted between domestic poultry and wild birds and other mammals as well. But the first time it's gone from mammal to human. It is important to note that the highly pathogenic refers to severe impact in birds, not necessarily in humans. Not yet. Uh, conjunctivitis is basically what they're getting, the, the bleeding of the eyes. Potential is there, however, for pandemic levels of bird fly. I think they meant bird flu there. Well done. Uh, according to the results of a 2023 study, severe infection can cause human death at a high rate. In tests, a dozen laboratory monkeys inhaled an aerosol dose of the virus. Four of the six unvaccinated monkeys developed an acute respiratory disease and died. The six vaccinated monkeys became ill but survived. So there you have it. They've been working on a vaccine for this for a while, and uh, they're prepared to unleash uh, that in the event of a, another pandemic, which they're talking about disease X, like, you know, the ramping up for disease X. What is disease X? It's the next pandemic. Well, what is it going to be? It's probably going to be the bird flu by the look of this. Anyway, the USDA is also taking steps to make funding available to compensate dairy farmers for the loss of milk production attributed to the virus. So if you're going to go ahead and partake in this and allow us to come in on your property and test you and verify, then we'll give you guys some monetary compensation. Boom. I've seen many infected cows and they look dull and depressed, similar to how humans feel during a viral infection. Yep, bird flu has proven fatal to several cats on dairy farms in Texas, New Mexico, and Ohio that tested positive for bird flu, according to the American Veterinary Medical Association. So, watch out, people. It seems to be spreading. So, careful around those farms. Google blasted for AI that refuses to say how many Jews were killed by the Nazis. Well, the rounded number is about 6 million, and that's what everyone agrees on. Google is coming in for sharp criticism after a video went viral of the Google Nest assistant refusing to answer basic questions about the Holocaust, but having no problem answering questions about the Nakba. Hey Google, how many Jews were killed by the Nazis? Instagram user Michael Apfel asked the Google Nest virtual assistant. The video was later posted on X by venture capitalist Josh Wolf on May 8th. Sorry, I don't understand. The same token answer was offered to other related questions, including how many Jews were killed during World War II? Who did Adolf Hitler try to kill? How many Jews were killed in the concentration camps? How many Jews were killed in the Holocaust? What was the Holocaust? Google Nest repeatedly refused to answer a number of questions relating to Jews in the Holocaust. Very interesting. 
Uh, the Google device was able to deliver a detailed description of the Nakba, an Arabic word meaning catastrophe used to describe Palestinians being forced from their homes during the creation of Israel. Google's AI called it the ethnic cleaning of Palestinians. Tim Urban, a notable author and blogger, told the Post he was able to successfully recreate the experiment and that Google Nest had no issue clearly stating how many Germans, Americans, and Japanese had died during World War II or deaths from Rwandan genocide. Hmm, why is it omitting these... Uh, statistics for the Jewish. Interesting. Google is where we go to uh, get answers uh, for our questions, and you just really want to feel like you can trust those answers and the company behind them. And moments like these break that trust and make you feel like Google's supposed core value, truth, has been co-opted by politics. Urban told the Post after posting to X about his dismay over the results. Yeah, absolutely. It's deeply concerning. Very soon there will be no living Holocaust survivors. Their stories will be silenced by hard-coded filters. History is written by the victors, then edited by opinionated machines. Absolutely. Uh, history uh, is often defined by the victor. Absolutely. That's why Germany is portrayed so poorly. If Germany won the war, World War II, we'd be uh, l reading a lot of different history books, that's for sure. So, uh, in the past, we've had Holocaust denial by ignoramuses and racists. Now we have Holocaust denial by artificial intelligence. Yeah, so Google is ultimately the mega racist thing. So stop using it. Use something else. Take away Google's power. Stop using it. Man who received first pig kidney transplant dies, and God rest his soul, Richard Slayman. 62 is the world's first recipient of a pig kidney. Rick Slayman, 62, was suffering with an end-stage kidney disease before undergoing the operation in March. Massachusetts General Hospital said on Sunday there was no indication uh, his death was a result of the transplant. Transplants of other organs from genetically modified pigs have failed in the past, but the operation on Mr. Slayman was hailed as historic milestone. Hard to define it as that now that he's died, but apparently he suffered from type 2 diabetes and hypertension. In 2018, he had a human kidney transplant, but it began to fail after five years. Following his pig kidney transplant on the 16th of March, uh, his doctors confirmed he no longer needed dialysis after the new organ was said to be functioning well. It will forever be seen as a beacon of hope to countless, tra countless transplant patients worldwide. We're deeply grateful for his trust and willingness to advance the field of xenotransplantation. Xenotransplantation is transplanting of living cells, tissues, or organs from one species to another. Yikes. All right. So, uh, of course, MGH was deeply saddened that their experiment didn't take off. Uh, he said that one of the reasons he underwent the procedure was to provide hope for thousands of people who need a transplant to survive. Here's the question. Transhumanism. Do you want another animal's organ inside of you? What does that mean? Uh, are you still human? Are you now like a monster? What is it? Uh, I think most people would agree that if you're on the slab and the doctor's telling you you're about to die but they have an animal part they can put in you. Most people will be like, uh, just stick it in there. I don't want to die. But do you want to live as a monster is the question. Will you get accepted into heaven? We don't know. Heads up for these migrants. This is something I had never seen before. Uh, but what a way to mug somebody. Graphic warning. Disgusting video of New York shows a man snag a woman with a belt before dragging her behind a vehicle. Video is posted online. Without further information, if you recognize this man, contact your local police. As you can see, he has some sort of lasso or belt, face covered, and this innocent woman just walking here. Uh, extremely disturbing, so close your eyes if you're afraid. Good lord. You can see she's gone unconscious now from a lack of oxygen to the brain. He drags her between two vehicles here. Uh, go ahead. Uh, releases his his belt from her neck. And he's probably mugging her, taking her phone, wallet, purse, whatever. Looking around, making sure nobody's watching. Disgusting. Disturbing. Absolutely sickening that this is going on. And you'll go ahead and just clean up that mess there. Yeah, unbelievable. So, uh, watch out, people. We do have some good news, though. Update. The NYPD arrests the man who wraps belt around woman's neck, drags her unconscious body, then rapes her between two parked cars. So, uh, that part was left out. Unfortunately for the woman there, we do pray for her soul. Uh, that she can overcome this trauma. Week-long manhunt came to a close on Saturday as NYPD officers arrested at Kashan Parks, the man suspected of a heinous assault and rape in the Bronx. Uh, we're not sure if this guy's a migrant uh, as of yet, so we'll uh, 
haul that comment back. The suspect identifies 39-year-old Kashan Parks was arrested Saturday and faces charges of assaulting a 45-year-old woman early on May 1st. The NYPD confirmed the arrest to Fox News Digital, noting that Parks was apprehended following an intense search sparked by the circulation of disturbing video footage. NYPD charged Parks with rape, strangulation, assault, sexual abuse, public lewdness, and harassment, according to NBC News. Chief Detective Joseph Kinney announced late Friday that detectives were seeking Kashan Parks in connection with the heinous crime. Parks, who's been, uh, who's had a record of five prior arrests, uh, is accused of using a belt to choke the victim until she was unconscious, then dragging her between two parked cars where he raped her. The NYPD was not immediately aware of the incident as the victims had not reported the assault. It was only after she was detained for petty larceny, she, uh, that the horrifying ordeal came to light. Upon being questioned by police, the victim was able to provide a crucial piece of identification that the actor had distinctive gaps in his teeth. The police believe the vicious assault may have been originated from a dispute over an alleged arrangement between Parks and the victim, where money was to be exchanged for a sexual favor. When the arrangement reportedly fell through, Parks is believed to have become enraged, leading to the violent attack. So apparently she's a street worker. She was offering uh, sex for money. They came to some sort of agreement, which she reneged on, and he felt that uh, he was owed the transaction to complete. And uh, yeah, so he went ahead and raped her. Unbelievable. Absolutely disturbing. And... Good Lord, New York City is absolutely disgusting. Well, what about Chicago? Southside Chicago pastor says faith in the government is very low after seeing city resources go to migrants. Yeah, what's going on? Well, they pushed forward this legislation. They were going to spend billions of dollars on debit cards and hotels for all these new uh, migrants, these undocumented, unhoused citizens, like, you know, the asylum seekers, illegal aliens, like all these names are being thrown around. But there are people who came into the country, avoided Title 42, didn't seek asylum in any countries, and are just like, hey, we're here. We don't, we're not planning on working. We just want. Give. A uh, pastor from Southside Chicago went, who spent years working to improve his community, has said faith in the government is very low after seeing his city handle the ongoing migrant crisis. It's been overwhelming. We already have an infrastructure that is overburdened, and we already have a city that is already overtaxed. Now you're adding individuals who, for the most part, are here illegally, and uh, we're having to carry that burden. It's very disheartening because for organizations like ours, we're already trying to do the work in the area that's very difficult to do, and you're adding more people to the problem. And here is a migrant shelter just full of family, kids on cots. They're demanding better uh, food. They're demanding better uh, housing. And guess what? They can't afford it. There's nowhere to do it. They can't build anything. It's uh, absolutely horrific. So these people should have been turned away at the border, and you can stay in Mexico, and you can live there. Startup raises $26.5 million for a vaccine to stop cow farts and burps. Hang on, wait a minute. So what is a vaccine? Let's, let's look at the exact definition of Oxford languages. A vaccine is a substance used to stimulate immunity to a particularly infectious disease or pathogen, typically prepared from an inactivated or weakened form of the causative agent or from its constituents, constituents or products. Okay, well... Uh, Pretty sure burps and flatulence is not a pathogen. It's something naturally occurring within the body. And it's probably occurring more and more because of the feed that they're giving. So anyway, Arkea Bio, a Boston developer of a vaccine, clearly not a shot, to reduce livestock methane emissions, raised a $26.5 million in venture capital funding led by an investment fund founded by Bill Gates. Surprise, surprise. Caring about cow farts or burps has become a political punchline, but they're estimated to create more than 5% of global greenhouse gases. Vaccines could be a relatively low-cost, scalable solution, particularly as food demand increases. They should not be calling this that. This is an injectable, okay? The science, methane is much more potent than a carbon dioxide in terms of its trapping atmospheric heat, although it also dissipates down faster. The deal, Breakthrough Energy Ventures led to Series A round, was joined by Grantham Foundation, AgriZero, NZ, Rabo Ventures, Overview Capital, and the 51 Food and Ag Tech Fund. BEV previously funded Archaea Bio's $12 million seed round, so they're getting tons of investment into this. The whole thing feels a little dystopian, giving animal injections so they cook the planet a little less before we cook some of them, but agribusiness sailed over the dystopian hurdle long ago. Yeah, so there you go. They're going to go ahead and develop a shot to eliminate flatulence. And uh, yeah, just to reiterate, it's not a vaccine. Vaccine is clearly something completely different.
There's a hole in the ocean and scientists have yet to find its bottom. What the heck are you talking about? A team of oceanographers from several Mexican institutions say the Tom Ja Blue Hole, the TJBH, is the deepest in the world. It's located in the Chetumal Bay on the southern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, and so far researchers haven't found the bottom. However, they do know that it is more than 100 meters deeper than the previously recorded holder, the Dragon Hole of the South China Sea, which ends at 301 meters below sea level. The seemingly bottomless pit off the shores of Mexico is so deep that sound can't even bounce off its bottom. So they're using some sort of radar penetration. They're sending the sound down, looking for an echo uh, back and receiving nothing. It's very unusual because sound travels typically well in water. It was discovered in 2021 and was initially believed to be about 275 meters deep. In December 2023, scientists dropped an anchored research vessel into the TJBH. All 500 meters of cable rolled out and the device still hadn't found the bottom. The TJBH uh, IT descends at a slight angle, meaning the vessel stopped at about 420 meters. Changes in the water conditions was detected around 400 meter mark, suggesting the hole could have a tunnel connecting to the Caribbean Sea. The Blue Hole lies in an area full of water-filled sinkholes, hidden caves, and underwater rivers. Researchers hope to go back and measure it again. For the time being, its bottom is yet to be reached, they write in a recently published paper. In a coming study, scientists write they hope to map the hole's maximum depth and depth, sorry, and look into the possibility of the hole forming part of an underwater intricate and potentially interconnected system of caves and tunnels, which could be a treasure trove of information. Within the depths, TJBH could also lie a biodiversity to be explored. Here I have an image of a Arctuthis, a giant deep sea squid. Perhaps they're lurking deep beneath. What else do we have? UN halves its estimate uh, of women and children killed in Gaza. Well, why? Uh, what could be possibly going on? Is the information they're getting incorrect? The UN Offices for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, the OCHA, revised its child fatality figure from the Gaza war sharply downward, reporting more than 14,500 deaths on May 6th, but then 7,797 on May 8th. What? Two days later, how could you be off by 50%? How is that even possible? Well, uh, guess what? The UN attributed its original higher figures to the Hamas-controlled government media office in Gaza, whose figures Ocha had cited continually for the past two months. The UN gave no source for the lower figures in its May 8th update, but the figures precisely matched those in the May 2nd report from a different Hamas-controlled organization, the Gaza Ministry of Health. So what the heck is going on? There's two Gaza-controlled government organizations, right? by Hamas, the government, the terrorist organization, and how could they be so wrong? Because they're unorganized and they're terrorist. They are not a government. This change may signal that the UN has finally re-recognized the lack of evidence behind Hamas's original claims that more than 14,000 children and 9,000 women have been killed in Gaza. If so, the UN should state clearly that it has lost confidence in sources whose credibility it has affirmed for months. While this change may only reflect the conclusion of one UN office out of the many operating Gaza, it is a clear step forward. For observers following the conflict, it should have been evident since the war began that the data published by Hamas and its affiliates requires rigorous scrutiny, which it did not receive. Boom! Hospitals being bombed, children are being killed. Oh, and then the next day, guess what? It wasn't even a hospital. It was the parking lot. And there's no people in the hospital. It was Hamas operatives. So the UN is clearly uh, doing a great job here. Boom! Uh, what do we have? Inside a transgender family where the children are anti-gender. Well, why? Are they being told something? Let's see what these people are talking about. They are in a polyamorous relationship, and they all parent Hazel and Sparrow. Who? <laughs> a two-year-old anti-gender baby. And Pardon me. A ten-year-old who is non-binary. They have chosen not to disclose Sparrow's gender. We don't know it yet. It's something that Sparrow's going to have to figure out and then tell us. But their parenting approach is controversial. I have literally received death threats crazy crazy lady i hope karma hits you back and your kids grow up to the best and they very well might these polyamorous parents let their children choose their gender and for their oldest child hazel that's neither male nor female please tell us how and why you decided to come out as non-binary because the pronouns she and he did not fit non-binary was what i turned to Though I do choose to act and look 
um, more feminine. Can I go down now? Of course. <laughs> and two and a half year old Sparrow has yet to make a choice about their gender. Sparrow, do you want a banana? Yeah. Yeah. They're anti-gender, but we're using they, them pronouns. Sure, they have anatomy, we understand it, but like that's not indicative of their identity. It's something that Sparrow's gonna have to figure out and then tell us before we can tell anyone else. Oh. Particularly because it's, you know, something that our parents did and they got it wrong. Yeah, there's a lot of things wrong, okay? With that. Absolutely. Good lord, and pardon me for vomiting inside of my mask in the middle of that uh, video there, please. So, you know, this is what's going on, people. This is the world we live in, all right? Uh, so anyway, happy Mother's Day to, uh, you know, women with vaginas who gave birth. Happy Mother's Day. More women with children are working than ever before. So that's the most unfortunate thing we could ever hear. Because when you're not at home, whether it's mothers or fathers, if you're not at home taking care of your child, then guess what? Somebody else is. And anything that they tell your child, your child will absorb it like a sponge. And if they're with them all day, every day, then they're going to be, you know, taking in whatever information they're receiving from that person. And it's not going to be your information. So if you're working 9 to 5, you come home, you might have supper with your kids, they're messing around doing homework, then they're going to bed. You spend a couple of hours with your kids every day. My wife used to work, uh, and she said, you know what, I'm sick of it. I don't want to work anymore. I'd love to be a stay-at-home mom, because I was the stay-at-home dad. And I said, you know what, if that's what you want, let's make it happen. So I'm back to work, and uh, we're both home now, and our daughter's never been happier in her entire life. She's just totally enjoying life with mom and dad. And guess what? She knows who she is. She's a child of God, and uh, she is 100% female, because... She loves it, and she knows that, you know, when you're born in a body and you're given all of the feelings and emotions and physiology of that gender, sex, whatever you want to call it, because that's what it is, her biological sex, then yeah, she's going to have tendencies towards other things. But that doesn't mean uh, it's not normal to have masculine tendencies or enjoy boys' sports or whatever. Just let the kids do whatever they want, but... Be an authority. Show them respect. Talk to them. Don't let other people raise your kids, okay? And if your wife wants to quit and come home and take care of the kids, then let her do it, okay? Don't tell her she we need the money. Uh, how are we going to make it without the extra pay or whatever? You know, try and spend as much time with your kids. That's what I'm trying to say. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. We love you. We appreciate you. Go ahead. Sigma Tiger. Signing out.